Welcome back to another episode of Animal of the Week. In today's episode, we'll be looking at a twig. Once again, we're going back to animals that are named after things they are not. This is the twig spider, and obviously it's not actually a twig, but all of its predators sure think it is. Now, the twig spider isn't actually an individual species. Twig spider refers to a great number of different spiders, all of the genus Aramanes. Aramanes is part of the family of spiders known as Therididae, more commonly referred to as comb-footed spiders. Well, as this is a genus of 33 different species, they are found all over the world on five different continents. They are found in the following places, Hawaii, Costa Rica, Myanmar, Gabon, the Congo, China, Korea, Laos, Taiwan, Japan, Hispaniola, Australia, Guinea-Bissau, Peru, Brazil, New Zealand, Indonesia, India, Sri Lanka, and wow, this list keeps going on and on, doesn't it? Not to worry, only Mexico, Cuba, Equatorial Guinea, and all of East Africa to go. Within this clearly huge range, the 33 species inhabit a fairly similar habitat. You may have noticed the clear pattern here that most of these countries listed are in the equatorial region of the world. Obviously places like Japan, Korea and New Zealand are outside of this equatorial region, however they still possess some of the necessary humid areas needed for this spider to thrive. Well, they are spiders, so for anyone who somehow doesn't already know, most spiders spin webs to catch insects in so that they can consume them, and these spiders are no different. Obviously, due to the vast range of this genus, the insects each species hunt vary wildly from continent to continent. Aramane cylandrogaster, from Laos and Taiwan, actually hunts and feeds upon smaller spiders that it catches in its webs. Aramane's colubrinus, from Australia, also feeds upon smaller spiders, almost completely upon juveniles. Again, these are basically just normal spiders, other than their elongated twig-like abdomen, so they breed and reproduce just like many other spiders do. This is the perfect time then to go into detail about the amazing way that spiders reproduce. Once a spider goes through whatever its species' unique courtship ritual is, the male then deposits its sperm into a special silken sag that it has woven. If successful, the female will accept the sack of sperm and carry it around with her until she's ready to lay her eggs. A female can actually carry multiple sacks of sperm from different males all at once, and therefore fertilise multiple sacks of eggs it produces over time. Once ready, the female transfers the now fertilised egg into a sack of her own and attaches it to different surfaces, such as long grass or leaves, or even the dark corners of your own home. Once ready, the spiderlings, yes they're called spiderlings, hatch and begin to go as far away from the sack as they can. Some species young are even able to let out strands of silk to get caught in the wind and carry the tiny spiderlings far away through the air. Well, obviously the big adaptation is the strange elongated abdomen that the twig spider has. The benefit of this adaptation is clear. The spider clearly looks like a twig that allows it to camouflage against predators, just as a stick insect does. The spiders are able to form a rigid twig shape to avoid detection. This ability is called crypsis, where they stretch out their legs forward to line up with their abdomen. Other adaptations they possess is their coloration. This is a big part of their camouflage technique. Browns and greens allow them to very easily blend into their surroundings and look like twigs. Now because they are a genus of 33 species, obviously the threats they face will vary greatly from species to species. They are clearly preyed upon something, or they never would have evolved to have their twig-like appearance, and that something is mainly wasps or hornets. They can be very deadly to these spiders. Other than natural predators, it is unknown if they face threats from humans. Undoubtedly, anthropogenic activities will have some sort of impact upon them, but whether this is positive or negative will depend greatly upon the species and the area that they live in. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.